So in an earlier video, an enthusiast left a very interesting comment. So essentially they used the CO2 signal integration to tell them when they should start charging their car. But they were wondering if Home Assistant could charge the car or start the charging process for them. If you have a Tesla and a wall charger, or even if you have a plug now that I think of it, um, you can probably try out the following automation. So for Tesla owners, you can take advantage of scheduled departure and off-peak charging. According to Tesla's documentation, scheduled departure calculates when it needs to start preconditioning or charging the car. This feature ensures that charging is complete and or the cabin climate and battery are preconditioned by your departure time. And this is great because this means the complexity of automating all of this drops significantly. As part of scheduled departure, there are two things to note. Preconditioning warms the car battery for improved performance and ensures comfortable cabin climate at your set departure time. Off-peak charging delays charging and automatically starts charging in order to finish before the scheduled departure time while also ensuring that the chart that the battery is being charged during off-peak hours to reduce energy costs. Think of scheduled departure as answering the question, when do I want charging to be complete? Since scheduled departure works in tandem with off-peak charging, the car will automatically calculate when it should start charging in order to be ready when you need to leave, while taking into account that it should charge as much as possible during off-peak hours. There's more nuance to this, so I encourage you to read the manual, but with all of that said, all of this can be done directly within the car. So if out of the box this feature works for you, then Great, there's less things that you have to do, no need to use Home Assistant. But you know your boy here got to be a little bit extra. I wanted more freedom to dynamically adjust the departure time, so I installed the Tesla API node, and when I installed Home Assistant, it also integrated the power wall that I have, or the wall charger, whatever they call it. The Tesla API node is an NPM package you can download. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find it, um, and I'll actually do you one better. I'll take about 30 seconds to quickly go through some of the setup as it was a little bit annoying for me to figure some of this stuff out. So maybe this may save you some time. Oh goodness, I hate going through stuff like this, but let's do it. So assuming you have Node Red open, click the hamburger menu, click manage palette, then click install tab, and then type in contrib Tesla, and then choose this one to install. Once you install it, you can then filter for Tesla, and then now you can see this node. At this point, I suggest that you go into the link in the description to see if, uh, basically to read all of the other instructions for this node. It requires you to get a refresh token in order to use it. So you can choose your poison and follow whichever instructions that best suits you. I chose the iOS auth app. All right, next, click the node and input the account information for Tesla. Now this will be your email and the refresh token that you got from the previous instructions. And as mentioned here, you will also need to deploy this in order to see the vehicles and the other information on the account. I think that was 30 seconds. Sorry if I went too fast. I really don't like going through things that are in documentations. It's just, it's just tedious. All right, now, uh, the last thing I should probably mention is that using this Tesla API node is not intuitive. To use any of the APIs, you need to go and find the parameters. And to do this, you're gonna to have to go to this particular link. I'll also put it in the description. Here you can find the methods and how you can find the parameters that those methods take. Unfortunately, none of the methods here tell you what they do or the nuances to them. Um, so you gotta be a real enthusiast to kind of go down this road, uh, but I'll come back to that. Okay, so now with all of that out of the way, let's go over the actual automation. And I think it's best to go backwards with this one. The purpose of this automation is to ensure that the car charges during off-peak hours and is ready whenever I need to leave for work or any other destinations for that matter. The, my first attempt at this was very complicated with a lot of different nodes and calculations and conditions, but since Tesla already have this kind of built in using the set departure, um, I felt that it's just best to just utilize that and just automate the other portions that don't make sense. Based off of the parameters that Tesla provides, there's just a few of those that I would have to have dynamic while the rest can be static. Now, if you go back to the API doc, under charging, you can find the set schedule departure command. This is what we need to call. Now, there was no explanation as to how this works or you know what these different parameters do, which was super annoying. Uh, but after a lot of Googling, I actually found out like in general what they all do. And this is actually how I found out about pre 
conditioning, off-peak charging, and all of these other things. So starting from the top and going to the bottom, I need to conditionally enable and disable this feature based off of my needs. Setting it to true will activate it, and while setting it to false will deactivate this feature. Departure time is the time that I would like the car to be done charging by. So this needs to be dynamic too, as this can change based off of my needs. Another thing to note is that the number here is minutes from midnight. So if I need to leave between 8 a.m., this would be 60 minutes times 8 hours or 480 minutes. Preconditioning enabled will make sure that the car battery is warmed and primed for any trip that I have to take. And off-peak charging enabled will make sure that the car is charging during off-peak hours. And off-peak hours is kind of self-explanatory. It's just a time when the off-peak hours are over. And this is also minutes from midnight. Something that kind of crossed my mind is I don't know how they know when off-peak hours starts. I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to just go with it, to be honest. So in order for the schedule departure command to work, either preconditioning needs to be enabled or off-peak charging needs to be enabled or both, along with enable equal true. So now that we know what this command needs, I need to find some information. I'm not sure how the car knows when off-peak charging starts, but according to this API, it needs to know when it ends at the very least. So after a lot of digging, I found a vague reference to my power company's brochure that stated I needed to charge my electric vehicle between 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. So for now, I'm just gonna go with the 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. use case, uh, which puts this number to be around 360. That's 60 minutes times six hours, 6 a.m., 360. For precondition on weekdays only and off-peak charging on weekdays only, I set it to false. I want this to be efficient every day. Since set schedule departure needs either precondition or off-peak charging enable, I will enable them both. And since all of this needs to be enabled all at once, I'll just use the same variable that will enable the enabled, if that makes any sense, to enable everything else. Bottom line is, I'll create one variable to enable these three parameters. Lastly, I want to dynamically change the departure time. So I'll add a variable for that here too. So now that we know what parameters this takes and what needs to be dynamic versus static, let's see how to pass information to the Tesla API node. So according to the docs, I need a property called command args to be in the output, and this node will read from it and set all the parameters for me based off of what's stored inside command args. So in this function, I gave the output message an additional uh, property called command args, and with that, I'm going to fill it out just like how we planned. For now, I'm just going to pretend or make up these pretend variables to hold the dynamic properties. And because I already went through this process, I also know that I need to set up the auto wake up feature to true. Now, at this point, these three variables here are undefined, so we need to create them. So this is a good time to segue to a segment I like to tentatively called Learn It, Two Minutes, Go. In software development, there is an old timey acronym called Solid Design Principles, or SOLID, right? So right now, I'll teach you what the S stands for, which is Single Responsibility Principle. And Google actually has a pretty decent definition of this. This idea behind SRP is that every class, module, or function in a program should have one responsibility or purpose in that particular program. If a particular class, subroutine, or logic is responsible for many things, then it has many reasons to change and subsequently many reasons to go wrong. And if it does many things, then there's a good chance it'll be used by many other functions. This is how you end up with spaghetti code. SRP is simply a general rule of thumb that helps code maintain its maintainability by restricting what each piece of logic is allowed to do. So what does this have to do with our automation? Well, I could shove all of this logic I need into this one function or node, and it will work, but it makes it difficult to reuse. A and I also want to keep it easy to read. So to define these additional variables, I will create additional nodes whose single sole responsibility it is to just define them. Done. So I'll create a new node that will determine the departure time as in minutes from midnight. To do this, I will first need to create a time entity where I can change the time to whatever I want. In devices and services, click helpers, then click create helpers, click the date and or time. And I name mine's departure time. I can use the current state node and select the departure time entity 
And then the next thing I'll need is a function to convert this time from a string into an actual date time object, and then calculate the minutes from midnight based off of that date time. Sounds like a lot, I know, but we're gonna power through it. To make all of this simple, I'm going to install NPM package called sugar. Now I love sugar. The convenience methods they provide is sweet, all the puns intended. Using sugar, I calculate the depart time using today's date at 12 a.m. or midnight, and adding the time from the entity. Two things to note is that the time is in 24 hour mode and the time zone is in UTC. As a result, I added this extra section that checked to see if the depart time was created before now. If it was created before now, then it, the calculations just won't work. So we need to set the depart time to the future. From there, we can ask Sugar how many minutes from midnight is it from the given date, and we can store that answer in the designated variable we referenced earlier. Now the last variable we need to fill is the enable off peak variable. Since this is dynamic too, I want to be able to toggle this set schedule departure feature via some switch. Similar to the departure time entity, we need to create a new toggle entity for this. I named mine's off peak mode. In node red, we can use the current state node, select this newfound entity, and in the following function node, simply check to see if the state is on. If the toggle is on, then the enable off peak variable will be set to true. Otherwise it'll be false. At this point, we have all the variables defined. The last thing we need are the triggers. Now my ideal trigger is voice activated. I want to be able to speak into the atmosphere and say I'm leaving at 11 a.m. tomorrow or start charging my car. But even though Home Assistant is, you know, starting to integrate voice a little bit more, I don't want to set up sentences and do all of that kind of stuff. That stuff don't scale well right now and I'm, I'm just not into that. So until then, uh, I created three triggers that I felt was just okay. Uh, a little annoying, but good enough to just get this done. So the first trigger is when I plug in the car. This one is by far the most reasonable one. I have Home Assistant watching to see whenever the car is connected to this wall charger. This trigger is actually pretty convenient as I don't have to do anything out of the ordinary. The second trigger is when the departure time changes. This is what I hope can change to voice when possible, but for now, we'll just do it manually within Home Assistant when necessary. And the last trigger is like a dead man switch um, that will basically enable and disable this entire feature altogether. And we can connect this particular node directly into this function. When I plug in the car, the lights remain blue, and when it's time to charge, it turns green. Changing the departure time or toggling the off-peak mode entity also updates the settings as well. So to help with all of this, I created a dashboard that can track all of this and more. And if you're interested to see what that looks like and how I set that up, you can subscribe and hit the bell so you can get alerted whenever I drop that video. Okay, bye.